Estrad's body fell to the floor of the shattered castle Raven Loft. A shockwave rushed across the valley. The walls of fog that enshrouded Barovia began to lift, and for the first time in centuries, true sunlight touched the land. Survivors from the battle lowered their weapons, squinting in the daylight. For the first time any of them could remember, Barovia had a future. But what would that future hold? What became of those that would lead Barovia? Though she had agreed to follow Irene, the sorceress's death left Irina with little choice but to push a claim of her own. While some argued that inheritance based on reincarnation was unusual, Irina had knowledge of the valley none could hope to match. She was crowned queen of Barovia, adopting the name von Hur in honor of her first life. With a council of advisors drawn from across the valley, she ensured that her homeland stood united against any threat their new world might offer. As the town that paid most dearly for opposing Strahd, Berez was chosen to be the valley's new capital. Personally overseeing the construction, Irina toiled to forge this dream into reality. Though still small compared to its neighbors, Berez became the beating heart of Barovia, a sign that it was possible to recover from even the greatest tragedies. Once a struggling hamlet under Strahd's thumb, Barovia Village soon became a major trade stop for anyone entering or leaving the valley from the east. With their newfound wealth, artisans from surrounding regions were brought in to transform the dilapidated architecture into a beautiful stronghold rivaling even Kresik's imposing presence. After hearing of Irene's death, Ismark wanted to honor the hero he had pledged his loyalty to. As his sister changed her name, so did he. The Proud Spear family once again rules in Barovia. Ismark even found something to remember Irene by, an amber diadem that became his most prized possession. Following Strahd's defeat, Valaki's people returned to their homes. Vargas Autumnwood and his parade of macabre festivals became nothing more than a distant memory. Lady Fiona Autumnwood and her husband Nikolai ruled over Valaki, and Fiona cemented her position in Barovia's ruling council. Because of the sudden appearance of a valley near existing settlements, Barovia needed a diplomat. Fiona was appointed to the position. Using the promise of valuable trade goods such as the valley's fine wine and the threat of Kresik's advanced weapons, Fiona secured Barovia's political position with its new neighbors. After centuries of isolation, Kresik had once again opened its gates to the world. Though the city's overwhelming technological and economic power made it an obvious choice to lead Barovia's return to the outside world, its leaders kept their word to Irene, choosing to serve as advisors to the newly crowned queen. Having witnessed firsthand how Barovia suffered while she was safe behind Kresik's walls, Isabella dedicated her city's resources to rebuilding the rest of the valley. She also invited the other towns to engage in joint training with Kresik's militia, ensuring that no Barovian settlement would be left defenseless. Anna served as Kresik's representative on the ruling council, her calm demeanor a moderating influence on the more volatile members of the valley's leadership. Following her wife's death decades later, Anna disappeared. Guards on duty that night reported hearing beating wings moving away from the city at great speed. The abbot remained at the abbey for a time, but his work there was soon finished and he left Barovia. Everan took over the abbot's duties, offering aid and spiritual advice to any that sought it. Forge Master Andre did not survive the second battle of Castle Ravenloft. He sacrificed himself to protect Kresik's artillery and the crews that operated them. Though the smith was gone, his work survived. Detailed notes of his inventions were found in his home, and although it would take years to fully replicate his creations, the knowledge was not lost. The heart of the silver dragon, Argenbost, was returned to his home. Fed to the flames, the heart's corruption was cleansed, and a beacon of silver light shone above Argenbost's hold, offering hope to all who saw it. The manor became the headquarters of the Dawnslayer Paladins, their power bolstered by the dragon's ancient knowledge. The Amber Temple was left to deteriorate, and as the protective magics failed, the remaining evils broke free. Though these menaces did not compare to those released by Strahd or the Lich Kazan, they still proved a danger to anyone traveling Barovia without an armed escort. The creatures that inhabited the old bone grinder left following the death of Irene Proudspear, leaving the windmill empty. However, there are still rumors that three figures visit the desperate and dejected in their dreams, offering salvation for the right price.
The leader of Barovia's remaining druids, Megleth, dedicated herself to the Nightmother's service, working to heal the taint spread by Strahd and Baba Lysaka. With the Nightmother's gems restored to their rightful place, the Mardukov family produced vintages unmatched anywhere on the Sword Coast. In a gesture of friendship, the druids that once menaced the winery used their magic to further bolster the vineyards. They also erected a giant wicker guardian to ensure that no one tried to tamper with Barovia's economic lifeblood. Emil, seeing little place for her people in this new Barovia, left the valley soon after the fog lifted. Once she was outside the valley, she learned that many would pay handsomely for the combat prowess a werewolf could deliver. Her pack became a mercenary band, and while many still distrusted the Lycans, others sought her out, hoping to join her family. Following the battle, Mordenkainen returned to Kazan's tower to study the pocket dimension it housed. Once satisfied, he collected what treasure remained and took his leave of Barovia, collapsing the tower as he left. The Arcanaloth Neferon was never seen again in Barovia. However, when never bandits or demons grew too bold, their corpses would soon be found strewn about the countryside, their heads flattened and the indents of hooves upon their chests. Though its dark mistress was defeated, the seat of her power was never freed from corruption. The walls of the crumbling fortress remained devoid of plants or animals. Those brave or unwise enough to venture into the keep's shattered halls told stories of a lone apparition wandering the castle grounds, a woman in a fine gown, her expression filled with sorrow. And what of our heroes? What happened to those who saved Barovia from the darkness? With Strahd's hold over his family broken, Christoph Donbrook ventured out of Barovia to find his kin and bring them home. Although many were distrustful of the Donbrooks because of their assistance to Strahd, Kristoff's role in defeating the vampire quelled any overt retaliation. After helping his family create a permanent home for themselves near Sir Falls, Kristoff left Barovia to see what the outside world had to offer. Since then, many tales have been told of a young man that walked in moonlight, a raven on his shoulder and a silver spear in hand, speaking of a long-forgotten god. Hope remained in Barovia, representing the Morning Lord and Barovia's spiritual interests on the ruling council. Though it took many years, she tempered the zealous spirit within her, channeling its drive towards less destructive ends. Following Anna's disappearance, Hope was chosen to become the next High Priestess of the Morning Lord. While she proved a compassionate leader, any who saw the darkness lurking in her golden eyes knew this child of Celestia would do whatever it took to see her people safe. Irene Proudspear did not survive her encounter with Strahd. Buried in the Abbey of St. Markovia, a statue of her likeness was erected in the rebuilt city of Berez, a monument to those who gave their lives to see Barovia free. Tom had his fill of the violence and horror of Barovia, and so did not remain in the valley. Though there are no confirmed records of where the shapeshifter went next, across the countries and even the plains, they tell stories of an odd half-elf visiting them in search of rare knowledge, eyes focused on things only he could see. Saddened by the death of their friend Andre, Wisp stayed in Barovia to carry on his work. They returned to Kreza Kahiro, and their time with the Forge Master proved invaluable in deciphering his notes. Soon Kreza had a new Forge Master, one as likely to be found in their furnace as outside it, their body alight with elemental power. It is here our story ends, the monsters slain, and the heroes victorious. Regardless of their fate, Barovia left its mark on all that walked its misty paths. Even those that never returned caught themselves looking to the horizon, towards the misty valley once cursed by straw.